Guys, this is Dark Horse Rowing. We are here at the world famous Deuce Gym. The one pirate of, ship. Yeah, yeah the mothership. <laughs> one of my absolute favorite places, culture wise, vibe wise, just getting sun while you work out. And we are here with Lindsay Matthews, What's an amazing up? human being, founder of Birth Fit. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> and today we wanted to talk a little bit uh, about pregnancy and rowing and kind of how the whole thing works. And this is personal to me right now because my wife is pregnant. If you guys listened to the most recent mm -hmm. Girls Gone Walk podcast, you would know that we were talking about how my wife is using BirthFit. Yeah. So we wanted to talk to you about that because I feel like there are a lot of people out there, a lot of women and probably husbands as well, um, who are trying to stay fit while pregnant. Totally. And I have learned a lot watching my wife go through BirthFit. <laughs> I have watched a ton of your videos now. You're like my idol when it comes to understanding <laughs> fitness and pregnancy. And so questions keep coming up from different people. Like what, what is the right way to row when, when you are pregnant? Right. How does it evolve over the pregnancy? So I was hoping it's you could good, shed some light on that. Good, like I'm really glad you used that word evolve. Yeah. Um, well, as you and Imbo and everybody else that's, you know, fabulous at rowing, there's a rowing technique. Yeah. So it's definitely gonna change over time. And I wanna relate it to like the bar path, right? So okay. as soon as, um, a bar, like barbell bar path begins to change or is altered because of the belly, Yeah. then that's when we ditch the barbell. Okay. So if you're snatching, your body is not going to let you hit the belly, right? Yeah. So yeah. it's like a protective mechanism that's just innate within us. Right. Like how a guy wouldn't allow a barbell to like, smash him in the crotch. Totally. Yeah. So we're going to do things. We're going to create like compensation movement patterns. Okay. We're either going to pull early or go around, right? Yeah. Um, and so those. And you see a lot of that too. You see a lot of women totally. continue to try to barbell move throughout and, pregnancy. Yeah, and I always tell people like, just because you're capable doesn't mean it's appropriate for this time. Right. Um, so those terrible movement patterns are going to be stored in your primitive brain. So those get yes. like embedded in there, and on the other side, like postpartum training, when you're no belly, you're trying to, you know regain strength, establish um, snatches, cleans, all the good stuff that you had before, those habits are going to be really terrible, like super annoying to break. Same thing for rowing, right? Yeah. So it's, it's not... It's like the, the concept of like every rep is an opportunity to either yeah. row or get worse. You're either going to enhance yourself or not. Right. Um, so same thing with rowing, but I don't think it's as obvious or um, maybe it's not as ingrained because okay. I think the pregnancy over time, like you have a little more time to play with, right. with rowing. Um, so things I look for with rowing are, and Imbo talks about this a lot in her videos, is keeping the heels on like the platform or the erg. Yeah. Yeah. And mainly that's so that we don't become so quad dominant and uh, ruin our knees, but also keep the power in the glutes and the lower back because that's what's supporting belly. Right. Right? So, um, by the way, those of you that don't know Embo, <laughs> that she keeps referring to off camera, <laughs> you're gonna this, meet her. <laughs> yeah, Embo's right here. <laughs> um, She's hiding. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, Embo and I have actually been able to work together quite a bit. She is the rowing coach here at Deuce Gym as well, does some really amazing stuff. And, is also a coach with BirthFit. Right. So she we'll get her like to demo. the perfect blend of both worlds. So rowing I'm hoping, and BirthFit. I'm hoping we can get her on camera. Totally. Okay. You, okay. Yeah. Um, so, we'll pop, we'll put you on a rower in okay. a sec. Perfect. So just standing and watching in the background. Yeah. Right. Just creeping on the video. <laughs> <laughs> if you hang out long enough, eventually you'll probably end up on hey, camera. Hey, you come over here. <laughs> uh, so all right. Yeah. So it's an evolution. Totally. Feet down, making sure that we maintain yeah. good engagement because, totally. as you mentioned, right, that is your support system for baby. Totally. Your glutes are your biggest support for your pelvis, your lower back, everything. And if yeah. glutes are turning off or they're not active, then hello, like lower back pain, your center of gravity is pulling that forward, hello, knee issues, like all that's just going to transfer into things that we don't want. Yeah. Um, that's a big thing. Another thing would be, um, and we talked about this, like posture. Yeah. So leaning back is gonna just put a lot of pressure on abs. Yeah. And you see like when people do pull-ups, yeah. like the kipping stuff, and you might see them cone a little bit. 
And that means their abs. I all about toning, <laughs> by the way, over the last, like, I don't know, like three months, I guess, since we started. Like, since you started BirthFit. Yeah, <laughs> since we started BirthFit. Uh, and we went to see a BirthFit coach yeah. in San Diego. Yes. And all of a sudden, I was like, coning. Oh, so it's not supposed to do that. Yeah. Diastesis recti. Yeah. Like, crazy stuff. Happening. So if you see that, that's like, okay, that's a little bit too much. Like, let's scale it back. Let's maybe only row to where we keep an upright posture. Okay, so like uh, only swinging to 12 o'clock. Yeah. 12, 15, 12, totally. 30, as long yeah. as you're making sure to avoid that. Yeah, as long as your spine's in neutral, good to go. Okay. So it's so pregnant. Well, do you Come want to show us what yeah. that looks like? Okay. All right. So. Yeah. Let's let's imagine. Let's imagine. Emily's and both got a belly. Yeah, she's got a belly. So show maybe three or four good strokes. Belly list strokes. Yeah. Belly less. Sans, sans baby <laughs> and belly strokes. Okay. She's done this before. Yeah. <laughs> Clearly, she's worked with a good coach. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So now let's go with like eight months pregnant, seven okay. months pregnant. You're gonna find. Legs are going to be a little wider or um, froggish. Okay. Um, and then she's not going to lean back as much. Got it. So or she's forward giving. forward as much. Really. Right. Or forward right. as much. And, you know, that's the thing that my wife has been experiencing is that she just feels like she has no clearance to actually. You don't. Yeah. Get, like, get through the legs. So even though my wife can row, she finds it almost uncomfortable. Well, it's just like running and. Uh, like any other movement actually like when it becomes uncomfortable it's almost not worth it right so some people their belly does not get as big they still have room to like maneuver yeah other people they just the belly grows and it's awkward in comparison to other like the rest of their body right. so they're like okay let's find something else to do yeah okay um so then you know and that may be at seven months it may be at eight months it may be at 39 weeks yeah but then we go maybe we switch to the air diner maybe we switch to farmers carries and yeah. we're just slowly just toning it down so you're you're moderating to the level of comfort totally effectively yeah and, and safety yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> always that's a big one yeah. Right, the level yeah. of safety. Yeah, and totally. I think the rower is great because women may be like, oh no, I can't do anything for cardio, I can't run anymore. So this is cool. Right. And as a coach, if you have the tools to just say like, hey, this this can be safe and go off comfort and how right. it feels, then they're like, okay, cool. Like, yeah. Now I feel comfortable right. doing something kind of like rowing or running. Yeah. A little cardio-ish. Cardio yeah, cardio right, because they totally. know they have tools available. To yeah, them. totally. Okay. And then on the other side of things, um, like postpartum wise, it's a great tool to use because we don't allow moms to run until they've built some sort of strength foundation. Okay. Because running, you know, one-legged sport, right? And right. it's so much impact. So if they haven't done, you know, four weeks of the functional progression, breathing, a basic strength, then they don't have the strength in their legs, their core, their pelvis. So the erg the concept too everything about it is great to start implementing cardio back in and short sprints so at what point would you say a woman postpartum could start to reintroduce movement on the machine um we usually do it anywhere from you know as early as six weeks to 12 weeks yeah. okay yeah but it's not like let's sit on the rower for an hour right. yeah <laughs> sometimes if the rowers are out for right. a workout like today and we're doing the postpartum class and it's been two or three weeks. I'm like, okay, yeah. let's hop on the rower. Yeah. We're going to do two minutes. Yeah. Teach them how to do it. And they're just kind of like relearning yeah. the order of operations, basically. So what what does a postpartum class look like for you guys? Oh, I'll let Imbo take that one. She just did one today. <laughs> we did. Okay, so postpartum class is awesome. Um, it's four weeks long, two yeah. classes a week. And basically, we're we have a lot of goals, okay? Core function and stability huge. is huge. Yeah. So we designed what's called the functional progression. And um, we start doing that day one. And it's really like teaching women how to move, um, like babies learn how to move. Okay. So it's innate human movement. Innate human movement, yeah. yeah. Teaching women how to incorporate their breath with these movements, because the breath is everything. Um, so we set a foundation, yeah. right? Like that's huge. It's not just like, all right, get your body back. Let's do this. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's not, style. It's yeah. not like, pre baby right. body. No. Yeah. Okay. And it's really like this kind of like overwhelming sense of like, 
okay, I can do this. Yeah. Which is really important because these women have just gone through hell and back, whether it was beautiful or whatever. It was. Yeah, birth is traumatic. Traumatic. Traumatic event. Yeah. yeah. Somebody just was, uh, the doula that we work with the other day was saying it's called labor for a reason. Yeah, yeah. totally. Right? Yeah, so we really like talk about that and like, you know, you're just relearning how to use your body, the body that you have now. Yeah. And, you know, it's a cool community feeling. And, and then we do push ups, we teach them how to do pull ups, lunges, yeah. all the kettlebell move, swings. Cute, critical yeah. human movement. Yeah, totally. Exactly. Right? Totally. And uh, what was I going to say? The functional progression, like Imbo was saying, it comes from, we take it from how babies learn to move okay. and crawl. Crawl. You can, yeah. If you watch a baby, they start to integrate with their hands, and then they start to roll over, and then they start to crawl, and then they squat, and then they stand up. And it's like, okay, the baby's born with ab separation, with diastasis rectus abdominis. Okay. So how do they heal it? Well, they heal it by learning to integrate the cross-body patterns. Yeah. And right. the first thing a baby does is learn to breathe using their diaphragm by mimicking what mom or dad does, like that skin to skin okay. contact, they start to regulate their systems by being close to mom or dad. Yeah. Um, it's pretty cool. So, so, so that overall, whole connection me, is there in the postpartum period. So to bring it full circle, <laughs> all the way back around, how would, you, how would you rate rowing as a tool for, let's, let's go two phases, right? Pregnancy yeah. and postpartum. At, on a one to ten scale, uh, how do you rate the rowing machine as a tool for women that are ooh. pregnant and then women that are postpartum? I have a bias. Yeah. I would go pretty high. <laughs> I would go like seven, eight. Okay. For yeah. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. I would almost say um, it probably for me. Or is it I, a sliding scale? <laughs> it's a slide. Yeah, definitely a sliding scale. Like you probably get more out of it in the like first trimester into the second trimester. Okay. Um, uh, definitely a lot more in the postpartum period as well. Okay. Um, running, for women who have run before getting pregnant, they yeah. want to get back running. And yeah. like, that's cool. And like Lindsay said, we let them start running, you know, within a six to 12 week. Is that what she said? After 12. Yeah, after 12 weeks. Sorry. <laughs> um, I never make my clients run, honestly. <laughs> She I have doesn't them all really row. I have them all row. I yeah, perfect. I have all my postpartum clients row. And okay. uh, like, because they want to feel that cardio movement. They want, and, and the yeah. clients that I have really like, they just don't like running and yeah. it feels yeah. uncomfortable to them. That's a yeah, good and, point. And so the rowing postpartum is like, it's awesome for oh, me. Yeah. Like, I use it all the time, every day. Cool. Yeah. Totally. Awesome. Yeah. And the running, like, I. this is so much more useful for us for keeping like monitoring the breath, making sure they're breathing in and out through their nose rather than mm. if you see somebody running, it's like, <gasps> or they're losing that pose form and they're breathing up here and they're like, it's, there's so, no like way to monitor it. So if you were training a coach <laughs> with, if, with your experience as somebody who trains coaches, right? Yeah. What would you tell another coach to be watching for when it comes to putting a pregnant or postpartum client yeah, on the machine? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, the first thing would be just a calm face, calm demeanor. Um, and you'll have different intentions, like if you're having, like a, maybe you're doing an EMOM with a little sprint, mm -hmm. or you're doing something like a four or six rounder where it's a longer row or something. Um, but know the intention before you get on the rower so yeah. that mom knows that intention. And it's the same thing that carries over into labor. Like, okay, there's a contraction coming. What's your intention? I need you to know that you're gonna go into this contraction with a fresh breath of air and just breathe it all out, relax your face, relax your jaw, everything. Mm. And then once that contraction's done, you let it go. It's in the past, move on to the next contraction. Same thing with rowing or like an EMOM or anything, like depending on what type of, you know, if it's a sprint or longer, like know that and have a mindset, like you're training, tricking them into like mindset therapy See, there. Now, this is great. <laughs> I am I'm basically milking her for free advice <laughs> because my wife is pregnant right now and I'm a coach. I'm, so, I'm basically asking her what I want to know about for my so, wife. <laughs> okay, so your wife's how many weeks? 27. 27. 27. So now yeah. would be a good time to like do some 30 second intervals or like 10 calorie, 8 to 10 calorie stuff. Okay. Because they're short like sprints, right? Right, manageable. Manageable, doable, before it gets too uncomfortable and she doesn't want to sit on the rower. Yeah. But have her breathe like okay i need you to focus on long exhales like taking a breath 
and breathe, whether it's out of your mouth or your nose. Okay. Yeah, and I think for clients who follow the Dark Horse Rowing Program, yeah. which I personally follow, Great. hey. Great tie-in. <laughs> hey. Great tie-in there. They're used to that. Right. Like, they're used to that. Like, can't is probably super used to those intervals as much as I'm sure she loves yeah. them. Wants to admit. <laughs> uh, loves, loves them. Loves them. <laughs> um, like, you can be like, hey, your split for your 10 by 500 used to be 155 yeah. or whatever. That's a good point. Yeah. Like, and that is that is like something I've completely seen yeah. her, her struggle with. Yeah. Not yeah. to air out her struggles, but certainly that's something Where's she that, at? <laughs> yeah, yeah. She's not here to defend herself. Uh, but that's certainly something that she has had a challenge with yeah. is like that, that old fitness level just is not present. Totally. And that's one of the things that I think we try to support this is, is making sure that yeah, yeah. Right, this is a different place this is a different space it's mm -hmm. okay to be in that and it doesn't mean that you're less fit it just means that your body's it's having different. to adapt yeah it's, so it's cool. different it's so cool for you as a rowing coach to like have your wife be pregnant yes you can coach her yeah. I'm, I, I'm hoping this is a wonderful there are probably very few other coaches yeah. that are teaching rowing pertaining particularly to pregnancy yeah. but, but like, <laughs> it matters now you can watch her and like okay maybe have maybe not a 10 by 500 because yeah. that's like kind of a lot terrible but, <laughs> but say she did say she was down and like her her split was like a 220 you're like okay so she was 25 seconds away from her previous right. split like okay that's going to be kind of the gauge i use for my next pregnant client yeah. on yeah. their 500 meter splits or whatever it may be yeah. you can have this like hey like you're pregnant now your splits are going to be 30 seconds slower. That's great. Right. Good news. Yeah. And yeah. it's still going to be hard. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be hard. And then, you know, what's interesting is the pregnant body gets so efficient. Like the physiology of it, the yeah. oxygen, just getting blood to certain organs. Mm -hmm. So as she approaches, let's say, 33, 35 weeks, it's going to be harder for her to almost work up a sweat and get out of breath. Mm. So keeping that in mind as well. Like great her point. heart rate, yeah. like won't, she'll just be really a machine yeah like yeah. so we'll she'll, be, that, don't worry. <laughs> she'll be so efficient at just everything like, yeah at, all right any final oh. thoughts rowing pregnancy the beautiful marriage of both yeah. it is a beautiful it's a yeah. the rower is a great tool do you call it the rower or the concept too or all whatever you want yeah. Yeah, <laughs> um yeah. it's a great tool but honestly um and it's just like running. If it doesn't feel comfortable or it's just like jumping rope, it's not worth it. Yeah. Like you take it for like use the body you have today, work with the body you have today and know that this is a new chapter in your life and go from there. Like every day you learn something a little bit more about your body. And if you go into everything with a growth mindset or, you know, you can tweak something or we can explore something same way in the postpartum period. I cannot agree enough with that <laughs> statement because that is something that too few people practice is yeah. being accepting of where we are at this place and this time and being able to work from that place totally. instead of pining or wishing for something in the past or what you want to be in the future. Yeah. And I don't think enough people really take that moment to just be present no. and to be yeah. okay with where we are and understand that all we can do is move forward and try to make the best decisions and the best progress yeah. that we can with what we have. Totally. Yeah. Work with the body you got today. Work with the body <laughs> you got today. That is a perfect way to seal <laughs> the deal. That one. Guys, this is Dark Horse Rowing. As always, make sure you sign up for our newsletter, The Hustler's Guide to Rowing, where you will get our latest <laughs> video and blog article every single Tuesday morning in your inbox. Guys, we'll see you on the other side. Stay fit, stay pregnant, stay happy. <laughs>